بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم. Struggling with conflict by Shahida bint al-Huda. As Fatima walked along the tree-lined street, thoughts filled her head and mocked her sensitive emotions and delicate feelings. She hurried to reach the source of pleasure, security, and light in her life. She wished she could overcome this nagging doubt, but she was weak and in need of support. She told herself, I will tell her everything. I will explain all of my difficulties to her. I will confess to her my fears. When Fatima reached her friend's home, she knocked anxiously at the door. She feared disappointment, not finding her friend Amina at home. Amina came forward to welcome her. They shook hands warmly and then entered a room where they settled to talk. Amina chided her friend gently, saying, Oh, I have missed you. Welcome again, dear friend. Upon hearing her friend's warm voice, Fatima felt at ease and nearly forgot the aim of her visit. She remained silent, so Amina gave her a smile of encouragement and said, You do not look like your usual self, Fatima. Tell me what is bothering you. Her question helped Fatima to speak. With a trembling voice, she said, Oh, sister, something is very wrong with me. My courage has failed me. I thought I was well protected against Satan and whatever troubles trying to block my way to reach my goal, but Fatima silently thought of the right words to express her suffering. But Amina was quick to understand her pain. Amina asked, But what, Fatima? Fatima replied, I have lost courage. I can no longer endure these difficulties I am facing as a religious instructor. What difficulties are these, Fatima? Tell me about them. I am your sister in faith. Fatima told her, Being a Muslim, I believe in our responsibilities towards our beloved religion, Islam. I have tried my best to guide misled Muslim girls, to save them from our deviated society. But society, oh Amina, what about society? asked her friend. It is a corrupted one, with no morals. Everything is measured with materialistic values. Living in this society has made me feel a bitterness I never thought I could feel. Amina admonished Fatima. Did you think that the road of religious guidance was strewn with flowers and empty of obstacles? We should not deny these difficulties. But we are told not to worry about troubles and hardships as long as we are on the right path for the sake of Allah. Haven't you heard the words of one Muslim woman, believer? Whatever difficulty we encounter in the way of Islam is not a difficulty, and whatever bitterness we may feel is not a bitterness. Now tell me, Fatima, what specifically has happened to upset you? Fatima sighed. It is not any one particular incident. Then Amina told her, So you feel cowardice in front of deviated currents and you fear harmful ideologies? When Fatima heard these words, she cried, No, I am never afraid of such things. It is troubles and obstacles, indifference and lack of understanding that my efforts are returned with, and much more. And what else, Fatima? Tell me everything so that I can help you. Fatima said, From the beginning, I had a strong desire to serve my religion by all means and at all levels. I believed also that Islam knows no limits but the commandments of Islam and following them in action. Fatima stopped as if not knowing how to continue. Amina said, That is why it hurts you so much to find that society is still under the yoke of false measures, that a person is judged through a materialistic viewpoint and within a frame of pseudo-measures. But had society been a utopia, believing in Islamic values, considering an individual through realistic measures,
then our cause, Islamic guidance, our responsibility, would not have purified our souls and increased our determination to surmount any difficulties. Had we been struggling in a virtuous society, guiding our fellow Muslims in an ideal environment, flowing with the tide instead of having to oppose it as we do today, then we would not have been among those referred to in the Holy Quran as patient men and women. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Surely men and women who submit, and the believing men and the believing women, the truthful men and the truthful women, and the patient men and the patient women, Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a mighty reward. Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 35. Fatima then said, But Amina, our enemies rejoice. They mock us when we are distressed or are facing hardships. Amina smiled and asked, Haven't you read the Quranic verse? You shall certainly be tried respecting your wealth and souls. Surely this is one of the affairs determined upon. And the verse Think not that those who rejoice for what they have done and who love to be praised for what they have not done, so do by no means think them to be safe from chastisement, and they shall have a painful chastisement. Al Amran verses 186-188 The Holy Quran has clearly revealed everything. It has lined the path with thorns and obstacles, but the aftermath with bounties and blessings. We must be sure of ourselves in order to stand firm and avoid collapsing in the face of difficulties. We must always remember the early days of the message of Islam and all the hardships that faced the great messenger of Allah, prayers be upon him and his family, when he called on people to give up the worship of their idols and to worship Allah, the One, the Almighty. Amina continued, The Prophet toiled to prune a primitive nation which was overgrown with wild traditions such as unprovoked attacks, the plundering of properties, murder, the drinking of alcohol, and the committing of adultery, as well as other indecencies. He planted and nurtured divine values and morals in the people in order to make them the best nation ever found among nations. We should remember Muhammad, son of Abdullah, the offspring of the best family in the Arab Peninsula and the noblest member of the Quraysh tribe. All of the people, young and old, high and low in society, agreed that he was a truthful, honest person. We should try to imagine the responsibility this great man assumed when he was chosen by Allah to carry his message. All of the tribes rose against him and joined forces opposing him. They threatened him and barred any trading with him. Standing firm, he neither relinquished his divine duty nor stopped calling on the people to worship Allah. He and his followers were isolated, as if he was a deviated person. He endured every kind of insult and mockery. They called him a wizard, while he was the prophet and called him a liar, while he was the most truthful, honest person in their midst. They said he had been taught by someone, while his knowledge had been revealed to him by heaven. They accused him of madness, while he had the greatest prophetic wisdom. We should keep all this in mind and remember as well the Prophet's dua, words of prayers, to Allah, when he was in the village of At-Ta'if, calling people to worship Allah. The people of that village sent their sons to throw stones at him, make fun of him and insult him. He took refuge by a wall and stretched out his hands towards the sky, praying to Allah, O oh Allah, to you I complain my weakness, my lack of means and the scorn of my people. O oh God of the oppressed and of mine, to whom do you leave me? To a rap for a relative or to a foe to whom you gave control over me? If you are not angry at me, I don't care whatever happens to me. Your compassion is great enough for me. Amina went on. 
Fatima, we must remember the Prophet's words after his painful suffering. As long as we are certain that our ideas are right and our belief is true, we should not be daunted by falsehood and fear. Fatima, remember the Honorable Zainab السلام, the daughter of the leader of the faithful, Imam Ali السلام, when she stood near the body of her slain brother, Imam Hussain on the day of Ashura. He was to her not only a brother, but a supporter and a defender. Yet, she put her hands up and said, O oh God, accept from us this sacrifice. Yes, Fatima, we must remember all this in order to remain devoted to Allah. As soon as Amina stopped speaking, Fatima cried and said, Oh, my dear friend Amina, may Allah never deprive me of your friendship. You are a guiding light for me. Your words have revived my spirit, which I nearly lost. You have helped my faith to remain firm and steadfast. How stupid I was to have lost all hope. Amina answered her, No, Fatima, you are neither stupid nor had you lost hope. These are feelings that arise as a result of many reasons, and the best evidence of your sincerity and your firm stand in faith is that you have come directly to me to help you overcome obstacles, which are the result of this deviated society, and which you have no hand in producing. But Fatima, could it be that you have also abandoned reading as you have abandoned visiting me? I never abandoned you. I was feeling so lost and I was afraid. And she stopped, hesitant to resume her sense. So Amina asked, You are afraid of telling me about such bleak thoughts. But here you were wrong, my dear. You worried about speaking frankly to me about your inner conflict but did not fear the serious results of remaining silent? She smiled at Fatima, who said, You should be quite sure that I will never feel weak again, and I will always confess my fears and my hopes to you. You will remain my guiding angel, as you have always been. Amina embraced her, saying, O oh, Fatima, I am not an angel. I am only a loving, advising sister to you and to all Muslim girls. تمت بحمد الله